everyone who's here watching. Please say hello if you're here watching. Can you hear me? Are you there, Peter Strauss? all hear me? Hello? Because we have four people watching. Is anyone, can anyone hear me? Well, Peter says it's very quiet. Hang on, I'll turn it up a little bit. Peter, is that better? Try that. Peter, can you hear me better now? Is, is this better? Or is it worse? Tell me now. How's it, how's it sound? Uh, this is as loud as I can get it. I don't know why. It is a little quieter than normal tonight, even on my, uh, on my audio mixer. It is really quiet, but I can't, I can't get it up any higher. That's as, it's literally as far as it'll go. Is anyone else in the chat having trouble hearing or Yeah, I don't understand why it's so quiet today. Yeah, I don't um, understand why it's so quiet today. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand, understand why I can hear myself now all of a sudden. Yeah, I don't I don't get it why it's quiet. I have OBS turned up as high as it'll go. I've changed zero settings. Uh hang on, I'll check my microphone settings to see if I can turn it up a little bit. A look at this. Nope, it's not what I want. But everything keeps opening up on the wrong monitor. Uh, nope, don't want that. How about now? How does that sound? I can't see the uh, OBS thing. How's that? It looks better on OBS, that's for sure. 
Does that sound better to everyone? Cool. All right. Well, welcome everyone to um, setting up a score in Dorico. Uh, this is Dorico 3.5. It was literally just released today. Um, I had, as you know, we're starting the new series with Kevin on Saturday. Kevin Day. Uh, we're going to be composing a new grade 1.5 in Dorico. And so I figured, uh, well, I had asked Kevin uh, if he wanted to be with me when I set up the score or if he wanted me to just do it. And he was like, hey, I don't need to be there for that. So I figured I would set up the score. Um, see so the microphone's better cool so uh, I left the tutorial up this is the tutorial that is when you very first start uh, I figured that we would uh, enjoy the tutorial together um, mostly because I haven't seen it also um, I do also I don't know if you all saw I literally just installed this so I have not looked at it i have not i had i mean the tutorial is still here uh, i have not looked at this at all uh, i'm currently downloading the dorico pro 3.5 sounds i really don't know what those are and to be honest with you because i haven't tested this yet i don't know if my note performer sounds work either um so we may not be able to like write music or anything or test that out i know that that's one of the features that were updated with this so um, we may not be able to do that. I literally just have the program running. Uh, it looks very similar to before. I mean, if you look here, I know that this background thing, the, the whole looking like the ocean uh, thing, I know that that's part of the new update. But uh, all right, let's start going through the tutorial. Thank you for updating to Dorico 3.5. This is a guided tour, or this guided tour introduces you to some of the new features and improvements switch to each mode in switch to each mode in turn for details of changes in each one next if you need to produce parts in different transpositions for particular instruments the new clef and transposition overrides dialog makes that easy simply create a new part layout for that instrument then right click the new layout and choose clef and transposition overrides from the context menu. You can now change the page background colors. Yes, yes, I was telling you all, you can change these. And if you note, I think when you go to engrave, it goes to a solid blue, but you can actually edit it. So like if you want your school colors or whatever, you can actually uh, change that. Uh, but let's, let's go on. You can now change the page background colors for each type of layout so you can distinguish full scores and parts at a glance you can also change the background gradients behind each page with different colors for write and engrave mode to further help orientate you go to the general page of go to the general page of preferences to get started set up octave clefs you can now specify whether or not the octave reminder on clefs affect the staff position of notes written for those clefs. Go to the new clefs page of notation options to get started. You can now also specify an octave shift for any clef via the properties panel, allowing the notation of different clef conventions for instrument like horn and, wait a minute, I think that's a typo. Different clef conventions for instrument. I should be instruments like horn and bass clarinet. To replay this tour, choose what's new tour from help menu. 
from the help menu for full details and documentation of all the changes in Dorico 3.5, please refer to the version history PDF. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of that. If we stumble upon the new things, that'll be good. Um, we're not going to we're not going to go through it now. Um, I'm not going to do that. So let's finish the tour and let's set up a score. So we're going to add some solo players here. I know that the, the search thing that they've added here is new. Uh, the, and that's everywhere. Um, it's under when we get to engrave and write. If we're down here in uh, the inspector tab or if we're in any of the menus, everything has a search option now. So let's we're going to do a grade 1.5, so we need a flute. Cool. Oh, that wasn't quite done with that, but okay. That probably was my fault. All right. Next, we need an oboe. Oops. Okay. So I guess that this is going to disappear every time. It's not really helpful, but it is what it is. Um, clarinet, B flat, add. Now, you guys should, what's neat about this is so when we add the next one, uh, the numbering will automatically populate, which is very nice. So here, if we do this. Yep, see, it automatically adds in B flat one and in B flat two. Now we can actually change it so that it'll actually, like we don't have to change the wording of it. So say we want B flat clarinet one and then B flat clarinet two. We can tell it to do that. Uh, and I'll show you guys how to do that in a minute. But let's get all the instruments in here before we go through all the, uh, all of the ifs, ands, and buts of, of that. All right, so next is bass clarinet. Next, we need a bassoon. Add. Now, if I remember correctly, we can right click and duplicate. And that should give us, yep, automatically the one and two. So we. So you can do that that way, or like I just did, you can duplicate it. Add an ensemble. So if I do, I need tenor saxophone. Peter, that didn't, it did the same thing. Except now one I have an ensemble and one now I have a solo player. That didn't that didn't do anything. Next one over. Hang on, let me finish the, the woodwinds then. Tenor, saxophone, defaults. All right, so if I do this and I hit trumpet, then B flat, I hit add. Now I have an ensemble. I don't know. Yeah, I did the next one. On... You're talking about the ensemble thing, not the. Um... Oh. But see, okay, so that is. If I remember correctly. So now if we do this, yeah, so. I would be using whatever their default. 
Like, see, I don't want three trumpets. I only want two of them. I mean, I could do the same thing, add two and delete one, or I could just add two and not bother with that. I mean, half dozen one way, half dozen the other. There's not really... I don't want four horns. I only want one. That's not going to help. I only want one trombone. So that's not going to help. And none of, none of this is going to help in this particular case. Oops. Um, I'm going to delete this. Delete player and part layout. Delete player and part layout. Um, all right. So, trumpet... Duplicates. Wrench horn and F. And if I remember correctly, we could tell it to just say horn and F. Or if we go to here and click on this, edit names, we can just get rid of that and we can get rid of that. But we need a period there. All right, next, trombone. Oh, for the, yeah, we're gonna leave the bassoon separate and the baritone separate for this, if we wanna merge them later. Actually, you know what? No, 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 no. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna do this properly. Because, as we saw, we can do all that fancy stuff. That's part of the, the new update, is being able to create multiple different parts and transpositions from one part so we're gonna we're gonna do this the right way so uh if we want if we created a um if we added more instruments to it it basically would like allow to switch like if you were in a pit orchestra uh that's not necessarily what we want to do um so we're gonna just edit the name it's gonna be a cosmetic thing so trombone Phonium and bassoon. Youth CPSN period. Okay, cool. And now we need to add the tuba. I don't know, to be entirely honest, if this is um, saving me more time or taking more time than if I did it the Sibelius method, where if I did it all in a dialogue and got it all lined up. I honestly don't know which one is uh, faster or, or slower. Um, I think that my kind of... Uh, it's different for me because it's, it's a new way of doing it. It's not necessarily that it's a bad way of doing it. It's just a different way of thinking about it for me. I've never had to think of it that way. Um, next, we want to add. I don't think mallets are going to be a thing, so we're going to have to just guess that we want a Glockenspiel. Then we're going to want. We want timpani. Then we want um, snare drum. I don't think there's just a percussion multiple lines. No. So what we'll do is uh, we'll do. Oh, that's right. Because you. Okay. So Dorico actually handles this different than, say, Sibelius or Finale, where you would. You do map it out, but you map it out much differently than you would uh, in the other programs. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a minute. So we're just going to pick snare drum for now. Um, but then if we go here, and we can... Um, the plus sign, that's right. Then we add bass drum. Okay, add. 
now what we do is we combine instruments into a kit. There we go. So then we'd say snare drum goes up there, bass drum goes down there. Um, see, we can't do, see, I, I would like it to do this where we tell it to go all on one line and that's like the line. I don't think that this is how this works at all. Um, so at least it didn't. Let's see if they changed it in this episode. No, they didn't. It's two lines. So if we go to edit percussion kits, let's say we want it to be five line staff. Oh, I, okay, so I remember. We actually have to change this later. So this is, okay, we're gonna leave this alone for now. We have to change it later. I remember now. And then we are going to add one more percussion two, which is just going to be symbols. Uh, suspended symbol. And then we're going to add to the kit here a crash symbol. We'll just say low for now. And then we will combine these into a kit. We will put the suspended symbol. Let's see, this is C, E, G. We will put the crash symbol on C. Uh, so for these, if we want to change the note heads, we have to go to, we want diamonds. And for this one, we also want diamonds. Okay, cool. Now, so now we have everything here. So a couple things we need to do is kind of adjust the layout, if I remember correctly. So what we want to do is go to engrave, I think. Yes. Uh, it's thanking me once again for upgrading to Dorco 3.5. It's very nice. I feel thanked. This guided tour, they said the same thing last time. Design your own horizontal and vertical lines with the new line editors, which you can do in, engrave, in the engrave menu. I'll show you guys that later. I think that it's one of these. I think it's this bottom one. Uh, you can now change which staves are shown at any system or frame break. Double click the existing break signpost or select a note or rest at the start of the bar. You want to start the new system and choose staff, manual staff visibility. Uh, that's right. So you can actually, like, so say for example, uh, just the clarinets are playing and you could hide everybody but the clarinets. Um, that kind of stuff. That's kind of a new feature. It's kind of nifty. Uh, a lot of people do that in like symphonies or larger works. Uh, I don't think it'll be something that we would use in a grade 1.5. Uh, the manual staff visibility dialog, you can specify whether each staff should be sh hidden, shown, or reset back to the overall settings defined in the vertical spacing page of layout options. If you want to export graphics of small sections of music, create slices that can be exported in any supported format at any resolution. This is very useful for adding music examples to documents uh, produced in other applications. To replay this tour, okay, cool. Finish tour. So uh, this is how you kind of edit this kind of appearance of this. You can edit it here but it doesn't take like a uniform approach. Oops, finish. So if we go back here and we click on the first page, um, hmm. trying to remember how to get rid of where it says flow one. don't think it was just as simple as deleting this. Yeah, no. It was not that simple. Um, <laughs> so 
been a lot. So I, I wrote um, an entire piece in Dorco once. I really loved the experience, but uh, unfortunately, I haven't been able to use Dorco in a while uh, due to my commission schedule and stuff. Now I have plenty of time to learn Dorco, but um, maybe this is it. Yes, okay, cool. I want to get rid of this. Boom. Apply changes. Ha-ha! I did it! Woo! Cool. So, uh, as you kind of saw, though, from that, uh, Dorico is very heavily based on what are called tokens. Uh, if we go back to Engrave and we double-click here, you see that this is the token. So, if we go to File... Oh, because I have that selected. If we go to File, Project Info, so this is going to show whatever is here. So if we go here to Title and we go Grade 1.5 Adventure, we made the composers Kevin Day and John Pasternak. Uh, we made the copyrights. I don't remember how to get the symbol. So what I will do is I will go to Google and I will type in copyright symbol. And I'll just copy and paste it. There we go. Ta-da! Cool. So then we hit apply, we hit close, and now you can see all the text populates. Now, like you can do things with this. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily do this, but you can actually, for example, squish that smaller, bring that down. I don't know if it'll work because this is here. If we go back to right, let's go to apply changes. It didn't do what I said it was going to do. Oh, it's because it's the other page. Right. It's this page it's doing. So, oops. Okay, cool. Apply changes. Oops. Um, yeah, see, now it'll start going down to the next line. So if you figured out that you wanted it to be like Kevin Day and then the next line and John M. Pasternak, you could do that. Uh, I'm quite okay with it. Oops, looking like this. So that is how we shall leave it. All right, so let's go on a little bit more editing here. I need to remember how to get it to show the part name up there, but we're not going to worry about that quite yet. So let's look at some of the other settings in here. Um, so we want to now, okay, so um, I know this is something that isn't necessarily spelled out, but if you don't put a time signature here, you see it doesn't say measure one. So you have to put in the time signature right away. And uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. Now we can add measures from here. Go bar lines, let's insert some bars. I did, I did add a time signature. There's one right there. There we go. Cool, now we have a page. And now we can see what our second page sort of looks like. Cool. So, hang on. This is going to bother me. We need to go here back to the first page. Okay. I need to remember the token. Does it give me a list of... We don't, because we don't need a lyric. Lyrics. We need, yes, here's the list. So we can do... Staff labels full. And now we should be able to, oh, hang on. Why it changes, it's not gonna update. What, ooh, rut row. Why isn't it showing it's, we're in the full score. Why isn't it showing full score? All right, let's see what I did wrong. C 
See, okay, so here's one thing that's confusing. So sometimes Dorico will uh, automatically up, like, so here, we didn't change it over here. That was one thing I was actually going to try to remember to do because I realized I had forgotten to do it. This over here, it automatically updated this over here from Lyricist to Staff Label Full. So sometimes it'll automatically update it, sometimes it will not. Um... Try player name. I don't know if this is. Yeah, see, it automatically updated it over here. Apply changes. Nope, still not right. Let's try a layout. This isn't right because layout name is most definitely not correct, but definitely not right. So. This is not Dorico's fault. This is 100% my fault that I can't figure out how to do this. And I remember I had to do this in a piece that I wrote before as well. Layout name, layout number, player name. See, these can't be... I thought it was staff labels, full. Maybe it's not, maybe it's a staff label full. Let's try that. That probably isn't it, but let's try it. Nope, that wasn't it. All right. I know it's not staff label abbreviated because it's just gonna show the abbreviations of each thing. So if we go back here, apply changes. Yeah, see, it's just showing the abbreviations. What is this? So we want lay. Oh, maybe it is layout name. Maybe I am a bozo, which would not be the first. It would not be the first. But I feel like we did layout name, didn't we? Am I wrong? Yeah, that's what I thought too, Peter. But I thought, yeah, see, I did layout name, and it's showing. St oh. Is it not updating? Because here, if you look here, it says staff label short. But I definitely did layout name. Uh, left to right. Why isn't it left to right? Apply close. I have never been so happy in my entire life. So, yes, that was not Dorico's fault. That was my own inability to remember how to do that. So that is not that is not something fair that you can judge Dorico for. You can totally judge me, though. I'm okay with it. Um, all right. So a couple other things we need to make sure we adjust before we get started next week. We need to get measure numbers in here. We need to fix these percussion things. We need to um, make these staves a little smaller, and we need to justify these um, justify these instrument names left. So um, I think that we do these things and engrave. Now, see, okay, let me give a full disclaimer. I would guess if you were a frequent Dorico user, that you would just. I think what the that what they would. Uh, assume is that you would just know these things where these things are because you have used this program frequently uh, i think to be entirely honest that is how i was when i used this program last i just kind of knew where everything was i just realized we don't need two alto clarinet or two alto saxes it has been a while i don't remember what is under what tab and what is under what set of options so, we're going to figure this out. Um, I think if we go to setup, we need to go here to layout options. And we need to go to players, I think. Um, there's something about, yeah, here, 
percussion. We don't want a grid. We want a five line stave and a five line stave. Because if we see if we do single line instruments, I'll show you. It see it makes them both single line instruments. It doesn't just make a single line and put one on top and one on the bottom, which isn't what we want. We want what this did here, percussion two, and then the things are where we want them. So that is not what we want. Um, I did the wrong thing. This notation. We want layout options percussion and we want five line stave for this apply close so here then what we would do edit names um, and we would make these a little bit smaller This one, edit names. Oops. I did these. Yeah, no, no, that's right. Okay, and then we would make this smaller. Okay. See, now the thing is, is now it's gotten rid of the number. When did it get rid of that? Oh, because we changed the name. Because the names aren't identical, now we can't put... We can't put the things underneath because we changed the names. So we can, we can work our way around this. We're just going to have to add the number manually. Here, oops. Where do I want to go for this? I want to go to rename. Nope. Edit names. That's what I want. Okay. Oh, I forgot to. Um... Nope, not do that. I want to. names this one also needs to say percussion one there we go okay this one edit names percussion two percussion two see now we have it set up to go okay cool By the way, if you're watching, please uh, feel free to say hello. Is the Barry Sax and Bass Clarinet part going to come out? No. The Barry Sax has its own part and the Bass Clarinet have its own parts. But she would get the bassoon and the uh, uh, euphonium out of the trombone part. So what she would do... Uh, from my understanding, from what we just saw in the tutorial, and again, you guys know as much about this as I do, so I'm going to guess if we click here, and we click, uh, now we don't want to add an instrumental layout part. No, we don't want that. Players. This is what happens when you do not watch the tutorial ahead of time. <laughs> All right, uh, here, let's do this. Um, here, add this. So this will be the euphonium part. I spelled euphonium wrong. That's embarrassing. Euphonium, okay. 
So now if we go to, we should be able to click this. Okay, so now we can move this here. This one we will delete these names. I think it'll still, yeah, okay, didn't change, cool. Uh, we do need to change this to BC. Oops. No, that didn't work. Okay. We're going to, can we duplicate this? That would be really nice. No, we cannot. We need a euphonium TC. So this is where we're going to have to, because with the bassoon and everything, we basically just copy and paste it. So players, uh, that. Now what we have to do is clef and transposition overrides. Transposed clef, clef for first stave here. Treble clef, concert pitch. I think that that is all we need to do. Written, oh, here we go. Written C sounds as Right? Am I wrong? Let's go check it. Can we see this part? So, um, well, here the, we're about to test of whether or not the uh, note performer works. Oh, I heard something. What was it? Oh, it was note performer. Normal note performer works. We're not going to mess with this tutorial yet because. Oh, I guess we have to, because... Hi, Brandon. I guess we have to do the tutorial, because I clicked on this. Whoops. All right, so... This is a guided tour. Introduces you to some of the new features and improvements. Switch to each mode to turn on details of changes in each one. Expression maps have been made more powerful with new conditional switches for note length. The ability to define switches that are automatically mutually exclusive and uh, add-on switches for techniques that can be applied to any other technique such as legato or vibrato. Automation data that Dorico generates automatically for MIDI controllers when playing dynamics and other techniques is now displayed in the automation lane for the appropriate MIDI controller, allowing you to see at a glance what automation data is being sent and showing clearly when additional data you draw will in will override the generated automation data. So basically stuff I'm probably never going to touch because I would be afraid that I broke something. All right, so let's check this. That says it's low F sharp. What What is it? I think that it needs to go up an octave. Yeah, it needs to go up an octave. So if we go back here, which is still impressive that it's showing F sharp, which is correct. Uh, I just programmed it wrong. It should be the other way. It should be B flat 4. And so now if we go to here. Oops. I'd done a bad again. It should be B flat two. Oops, B flat two. Did I get it right this time? Yes, I did. Yay me! How many of you were screaming at your screens? How many of you? John. That's the wrong one. John, you did the wrong one. But yeah, no, I think that feature is really cool. I think that that works really well. 
Now, one thing that I don't... Yeah, see, this is... We're going to have to figure this out. I don't know, but it's nice that it's finally doing this label correct. For a while, it wasn't doing that. Also, if you see here, it has the wrong things. So we're going to have to look and see why it's doing that, because it's not showing the five lines like we programmed it to do. So... Back to setup. Because there's a couple of other things we need to look at. Also, uh, where is... Are the brackets under engrave? I think they are. Yes, they are. I would not put that bracket there. These are the only two that get brackets. Okay, back to setup. So let's kind of go through one by one. Just kind of walk through everything. Accidentals. Yeah, we don't want accidentals by every note. And we're going to put a key signature, so we're not going to do this. Single accidentals, canceling double accidentals. Yeah, we're not going to do that. We're going to do that. Trills where the upper note is altered by accidental. Present in the key signature, we're going to leave it as a trill. We'll leave the cautionary in octaves, but we will put in parentheses. Can we put the parentheses? Yep, put in parentheses. So this is why I love, this is personally one of the things that I love about Dorico over the other ones. And again, I've said this many times on composing live streams. Uh, they all have things that they do really well, and they all have things that are aggravating. Uh, this is the one of the particular things, and I'll demonstrate one of the other things I love about Dorco as well. Uh, the condensing feature I love, and I'll demonstrate that. But anyways, before we get to that, I love going through and setting up my pieces like this and seeing exactly... I mean, again, like in Sibelius, it's just like a dialogue box. Like, imagine this would basically just be without the pictures like just imagine this with no pictures and it's not necessarily bad and it's doing the same thing but how much easier is it to see like oh well this is what i want like this is great like sometimes i don't even need to read what this is i just go oh this is exactly what i want so i don't know personally this is one of the things i love about dorco one of the things that, to me, is one of the reasons I choose to use Dorco. Uh, notes for which accidentals have already been stated within the bar. No, we will not restate it. We'll leave it like this. We do not want to restate Well, yeah, because it's at the octave. Okay, so I kind of see what it's saying here. Like here, these two are natural, and this one is sharp. Yeah, you would want this to show the naturals again. Um, if that's sharp and that's not, yes, we want a cautionary. We want the parentheses. Notes following trills introduce an accidental... Yeah, the parentheses are always good. always an accidental accidents or, or uh, the parentheses to me are kind of always the the solution uh, notes in the bar following a change of key signature I always do the accidentals or the uh, parentheses notes following a change of key in the middle of the bar parentheses Notes following a change of key that shows cancellation naturals. Parentheses. Notes eligible for cautionary accidental that following an enharmonically equivalent note. Continue to show cautionary accidentals. Yep. Notes with augmented or diminished intervals. You guessed it. 
Parentheses. Always parentheses. Let's see. And yeah, we're not going to do any of these. I don't think we're going to need any of them. Always restate. Accidentals on repetitions of the same note anywhere within a bar. So. Yeah, we would not put C natural again like that. We would not reinstate it, restate it like that. Accidentals on immediate repetitions of the same note in the bar. We would not put C sharp twice like that. Accidentals on repetitions of the same note within a deemed group. We would not repeat it again. Durations of accidental within a bar. Now, I want to say this, too. You may notice that the setup is taking a really long time. One, it's because my experience with these things are um, somewhat limited. But two, once I set all these things, my writing is so much easier, like... I don't have to edit anything from that point forward. Once I get everything done, it just, everything is uniform and it's so nice. Like I don't have to change a setting or anything later. It's just done. And it's, it's to me, it's worth the time to set everything up in the beginning that, and as you can see, like I can save as a default or I can, you know, all those things. Once I save it, I never have to worry about it again. To me, it's, it's, it's totally worth it. Uh, duration of an accidental. Within a bar. Persist to the end of the bar. Accidentals. Is it just me or are these like lighter? Like these are like, these are black. These are gray. Like all these are gray. That's weird. Accidentals on immediate repetitions of the same note within a bar. No, we would want. Oh, because we can't click on them. This option only takes effect if accident. Oh, so something up above made it so we can't change these things. So that's probably why they're that light gray. To tell you, hey, you can't click on that. There you go. Um, parentheses. I feel like we've done these already. I don't know why we're doing this again. Parentheses, parentheses, right? These are all parentheses. Yep. Appearance of altered unisons. Single stem. These are things we're never going to do in... in yeah, we don't need to worry about this. We're not going to be doing that. Um, okay, cool. So that is accidentals. Bar lines. Um, let's see. Default bar line is that. Automatic bar line at the end is that. We want that. Bar line at the end of each system. And yeah, no, we're not, we want uh, this. Bar line at the end of the last. No, yeah, we want them separate. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask at any point. Bar line at start of systems following the first system. Bar line at start of systems following the first system. Show for two or more staves. Does anyone see the difference between these? Oh, got it. Um. I'm okay with it. Yeah, I want it to be open like that. Yeah, you don't want that. Cool. B 
beam grouping. Break it beam boundaries. That. Definitely that. 16th notes, we would want like that, but we wouldn't want it. We would, uh, yeah, you would want them like that. We would not want like that. You would want that. We would not want that. Again, any questions, please feel free to ask them in the chat. I'll be happy to go over whatever you guys, if you have any questions. See, this is so this is one thing like so one thing that I love about Dorco I'm setting these like I know Finale and Sibelius have settings for this stuff but like to me the 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 how consistent or uh, Dorico keeps it to me is so much nicer like I'm going to set this and then I'm never going to have to worry about it again I don't know. To me, I really like how Dorico handles this. That's just me. Um, I want it like that. I want it like that. Uh, I don't think we're going to have to worry about splitting secondary beams in a grade 1.5, but... I would say we would not split them. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to use stemlets. I'm not a fan of stemlets, personally. Allow rest within the beams. So this, this is kind of a tricky rule. Um... <sighs> Personally, I'm not a fan of stemlets. I would... Hmm. I wouldn't say this. I would say this in some cases, but not all cases. Like... But the thing, so for example, is if we did... This was in 4-4 four, four time. This was a... A... a eighth note. 16th rest, 16th note. The question is, is would it draw it like this? Or would it put a quarter note, I'm sorry, an eighth note, a sixteenth rest, and then a single sixteenth note? So I think that this is the one that we want to allow the rest within the beams. I think that that's the best solution. Again, I don't think that we're going to have anything that warrants that in a grade 1.5, but uh, you never know. Uh, we don't need anything about clefts. Condensing. So this is condensing is important. So we do need to pay attention to this because we are going to uh, use this. So when they're condensed, we just want an eighth and off two marking. We don't want necessarily this. Like this has. I wish there was a third option, and I know that they wouldn't. That had no off two marking, but it looked like this. But I know that that's not going to happen. Um. That. I'll leave it. I'm okay like this. We're not going to have anything like like that. But I would leave. I, I personally, in in my my writing, I would never. And it may not be the right answer, but it is the answer that I would use. I would definitely. First of all, on a grade one point five, you would never have these kind of rhythms. But I would not make two staves like this when I could just put it all on one. I mean, this isn't necessarily illegible. That's fine. Again, those are my opinions. Those aren't the rules. Those are just how I feel about it. Doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it wrong. Just makes it how I do things. All right. Five. 
Okay, so what this is asking is, do you want, like, basically everything to be on the same voice, unless the rhythm changes, or do you want lower notes to always be on a lower voice, and then the upper notes to be in an upper voice? I'm okay with this, where they kind of join up together, except for when they have different rhythms, so I'm totally fine with, with this. That's how, especially in a grade 1.5, there's no... You're not uh, you're not going to be able to do that much, or you, you wouldn't. Not that you wouldn't be able to. You're not going to do that much. I guess is how I should word that. All right. For slurs, I definitely want both of them to be slurred. Prevent for all slurs. Um, yeah, I would do that. I like that option. Because you see this one, it's it basically it wants the notes face down at all times. There's no reason they need to be face down at all times like that. Or stem down, sorry, not face down, stem down, sorry. Um, Hmm, now this is a difficult one. So, for example, if there's a technique that's open, do you want it on both voices, or do you only want it on one? I mean, if this is saying both of them for that, this is saying both of them up and down. Hmm, I would say both of them like that. I mean, we're, we're probably, again, for a grade 1.5, never going to need that, but... Uh, so here, if the second voice isn't playing, do you put rests or do you not? And just put a label that 2 comes in there. No, that's a that's kind of a difficult question. Hmm. We're gonna put the rests. We're gonna put the rests. So here's where the staff the the the. Uh, Stave uh, system staff 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 labels comes in, the the numbering. Um, pair with the condensing for inactive. What would you do? I would leave them all on the same. I mean, we're not going to have three at one time. So that really doesn't matter for what we're doing. Credit instruments, we're not going to look at. There's the options for those of you that want to stop and look at it. We're not using any fretted instruments. So note grouping. Uh, I'm a firm believer that you always split the middle of the bar. Uh, you, I would never, ever, ever do this in my writing. I would never. You always need to see where the middle of the bar is. Um, but I would... I would do a dotted half note like that. I would never like this, though. I would use a half note like that. I wouldn't... See, this is confusing. I would never... Oh, wait a minute. Hmm. Yeah, I think I like this one, because it's one, two, three. The halfway point is here. This one is one, yeah, no, no, no. This is definitely the winner. Um, note starting on a beat followed by the rest in the middle. Like that. See, I would do that. I would definitely tie it. There's, I would never do that. I mean, that's a difficult. That's a difficult one. I'm gonna leave it like this. I mean, we're, again, we're not gonna need this, but I'm gonna leave it like that. We'll leave that alone. Notation, 
Yeah. <laughs> sure they do, Peter. Sure they do. Uh, notation of. Yeah. See, I would always do the the slurs like or the ties like this. I would never. I would do this. I would also do this. I would never do that. Again, I would split the middle of the bar. I would do that. I would do this. I would never do that. All right. Percussion. Um... See, to me, I would never do either of these things. I would just write the second voice in a different voice. Like, this is the top voice. Like, so if I had a, a quarter note, like, if this was an eighth note and this was a quarter note, which is what this is alluding to, I would just want this to be stem down and this to be stem up. Like this. This is what I would want. I would never... We'll just leave that alone because we're never going to use that. Um, we're not going to pad the voices with rests. Um, we'll omit the rests. Oh, because when we do it, so we need to stay uniform with this. We did this here. Um, yeah, we'll do that in a measure, but this here, we're going to do like this. We'll label it one and two. Yeah, okay, cool. Percussion, back to them. Nothing. Okay, cool. We're done with percussion. So rests, we're back to this. This We would never use dotted rests. For cues, I never use rests. I just put a label. Um... I would do that. I would do that. I would do that. Exactly how I would do it. I would do that. See, in seven eight time, I know some people do this. They put the the half rest. I never. One, two, or one and two and one, two, three, one and two and one, two, three. That's, to me, that's how it should be done. But everything's a matter of opinion. I would only put one rest. I would never put two like that. So see, this is an example. Like, so Sibelius would automatically default to doing rests like this. And there's no way to turn that off. Or Dorico automatically does that. So that's, to me, it's a huge time-saving thing. In my opinion, that is such a huge time-saving tool, in my opinion. Positioning of half, mim, and longer rests of opposing voices. no reason they can't be default positions um yeah let's do that center consider rests in the current bar only. Consider rest in multiple bars. And we'll use the semi grave. All right, voices. I would do that. That. Definitely like that. Hang on. What's the difference between. 
I know the the longer note always goes or the voice one always goes in front of it. Yeah, I would also never put a half note on top of an eighth note like that. No, I would definitely do it separate. I would definitely do this. I would never do that. That's not something I would do. Some of these things I'm well aware that we're not going to do in a grade 1.5, but. All right, cool. So we have gone through the, the entire notations options. Let's go through the layout options. Hang on, I'm still here. Give me one second. All right. Layout. So bar numbers. We want um, every bar. Uh, cancel. So here, we want to make sure we apply this to all these actually you know what no 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 because the score is going to have separate so every bar centered on the bar but see all of these apply changes the parts are all going to be every bar but they're going to be centered on the bar line after collect Go bottom, apply changes, back to the full score, show bottom, count repeats, all repeats, we're not going to do this. Show bars at rehearsal marks. No, we will not. Show bars at time signature and system object positions. Show first bar number shown every bar. Show ranges of bar numbers, multi bar rests. Show rehearsal marks below bottom staff and below show bar numbers start of codas. So now we need to apply changes, do all of those, show bar numbers at time signature and system object positions, show first, no, 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 they don't get a first bar number. Show ranges, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Okay, cool. So bar numbers are done. So brackets. Supply and let's look at this. Close. Didn't change anything. I had a feeling that's what was going to happen. Apply. Oh, because I'm clicking on the wrong thing. Full score. There. Apply. And nothing changed. Apply. Nope, nothing. The brackets are not changing. Chord symbol, or brackets and braces, let's finish these. Oh, we definitely want those. Uh, I usually do the piano brackets, that's just me. We don't need that. Okay, I think that's it for those. Chord symbols, we don't need those. We don't need mark, oh, we do need. No, 
No, we don't need those. We're not doing a film. We don't need note spacing. Page setup we do need. We need to make the staff sizes a little smaller. Let's try that. A little smaller yet. I think that's okay. We'll look in a minute. I don't think we need to change any of the other... We don't need to change anything else. Players. So these are, if I remember correctly, we, we kind of messed with these a minute ago, so that's why I'm kind of skipping through them. Um, well, here's a new thing. Figured base is a new thing. Condensing. Enable condensing. So groups to exclude and custom condensing groups. We Can we apply? Can we? Oops. Nope. No, we don't want any of that. We want, we want them to condense. Cool. That's exactly what we want. And I'll show the condensing feature off probably when we compose. So I'm not going to go through any of that. All right, staves and systems. Abbreviated. So I remember correctly, position of instrument pitch and full staff labels. That's exactly what I was telling you guys at the beginning. So if we hit apply, B flat clarinet one and two, trumpet, B flat trumpet one and two. That's exactly what we want. Always us like that with the thing at the beginning. We want that on top of them. Again, we're not going to use any of this. This is not very grade 1.5 friendly. Casting off. Here, let's do this. Oh, here, this is what we want, six. Yep, so now there's six bars. Okay, cool. System objects. Oh, this is, I asked for this a long time ago. Um, however, this is not exactly how I was hoping they would do it. I wish that they would do more like so for example if I have the saxophone separated I would like like for her, I would like um I would really 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 like to have it separated like cuz I would really like the uh, the saxophones to have a like if I do larger time signatures I'd really like for them to the saxophones to be separate but <sighs> is what it is cool Time signature. Speaking of time signatures, so we want once per. See now, this is what I wish that we could change. So I hit once per bracket, and then we're gonna. I'm gonna show you how to change the font of these because we're never gonna use these fonts ever. Um. We may use this one. This may be the one that we use. And I need to remember how to tell it. See, even though... So, hey, this is what I was talking about. So, system objects. I would like to turn off these. And I, there's a way to do it. I don't remember. We'll get to it, maybe, hopefully. There is definitely a way to turn those off. I don't remember how to do it. We'll see what we what we come up with. Or we can just live with, you know what, I'll tell you what, we're just going to live with the small time signatures for now until I figure that out later. Uh, with the regular font. <laughs> Let's leave that font. We, we may get judged. Or, not we, I may get judged. And now it's too... No. That one's kind of nice. Yeah, we're going to use the default.
I need to remember how to do this. I, I did it. I, I wrote this March. And when I did the March, I had it figured out where to put the time signatures. This is... I can't remember. All right. Is there anything that we need here? No. Okay. Uh-oh. <sighs> I made a whoops. All right, we may come back to those larger time signatures in a minute. But for now, we're going to leave them alone. All right. We're going to skip the right tab for a minute. And we're going to go to engrave. Uh, in fact, we may not touch any of the writing rules tonight. Maybe on Friday I'll do another one of these. and Because uh, we've been going on almost two hours now. Um, or I'm sorry, an hour. Wait, no. Yeah, one hour. An hour and a half. Uh, so... We'll, uh, well, I need to look at this bracket thing. This is not okay. I like to set up layout options. This was, where were the, where was the, uh, now that there's a, 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 a schnazzy, uh, Search thing here. Brackets and braces. When only one staff shows, we do not want it braced. So, so far, none of these have worked. Oh, because we're on the euphonium... So that's frustrating. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Why it keeps changing. That's frustrating. I have no idea why it's doing that. All right. Now let's go to engrave. Uh, we'll do the right options later. We're not going to do those now. We'll look at the engraving options because as you can see, there's... I, I'll tell you what, Friday, <laughs> we'll go through the engraving options and we'll go through the uh, the writing options, which are uh, note in. Well, actually, you know what? We don't even need to do these because it's just notation options, which we already did under setup. Yeah, we've already done those. So Friday, we will go through all the engraving options, which you can see that there are a lot. And there's a lot in each one of them. Um, and then we will also, on Friday, um, I have to be careful. What do I have to be careful of? Um, we'll do the... Uh, Well, thank you, Peter. I hope you guys learned a lot. I'll leave this up. So Friday, we'll go through all this, uh, all these settings. And then, to be honest, we also need to maybe... Where is the... Um... Yeah, we have to go through the fonts, and we have to align those. And Because, uh, to be entirely honest, I don't remember how to do that. <laughs> Um, wow, what was it under? Well, here's time signature font. Is this how I changed it? No. Well, anyways, where is the instrument font? The instrument name defaults. I remember this confused me when I was setting up the piece I was doing. There's that one, and then there's also paragraph styles, and it's very confusing as to which one you're supposed to go to for which thing. 
and I remember being very confused by it. So here, this is the alignment, and we want them to be bold. That's exactly what we want. Except not this. <laughs> uh, you solve one problem, you create another one. Yeah, I gotta figure out how to get this one, two to be friends with the trumpet. I'm gonna end it here. We will look at the uh, engrave options on Friday. Um, but for now, I need to take a nap. So, I will chat with you all on Friday if you guys want to watch. I don't know what time Friday. I'll post the thing on Facebook and Twitter if you're interested. Thank you all for watching and have a good night.